Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting episode of Omni Bros Live, the Monday show as they like to say. Welcome to this epic night where we will do hauls, previews, reads, all that fun stuff. I'm your host for tonight, Gio, and I will be joined by some of the Omni Bros eventually. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But in the meantime, let me remind you that previews and Halls and Reads is brought to you by our wonderful sponsor, InStockTrades.com, where you can get your collected editions and manga up to 50% off. Loyalty discounts tack on an extra 2% to that. And if you order $50 or more in your collected editions order, well, you get free shipping. Fantastic customer service, wonderful packaging that you can only get when you visit our sponsor's website, InStockTrades.com. Calm. Welcome, everybody. Uh, uh, where are the buttons? There are the buttons. There we go. InStockTrades.com. Uh, welcome to the chat. Uh, all the regulars are here. That makes me extremely happy. Uh, Lionheart, I am going to be joined by one of the Omni Bros at, a, uh, at some point. <laughs> We're running a little uh, late. I apologize on that, but a uh, little technical snafu at the last minute. But here we are talking uh, halls, previews, and reads as we traditionally do every Monday. Jess cannot be here due to some family uh, arrangement, something. I, I, I didn't really understand what was happening, but he's not going to be here. And Gabe is going to join us in a couple of minutes. So... <clears throat> We do have something really cool when it comes to the previews, so you're going to have to stick around for that. I'm going to go ahead and get things started with hauls because I didn't get any hauls <laughs> book-related. I did get a bunch of games if you guys want to uh, look at that stuff. I don't mind sharing. Um, the Collector, you're going to have to stay tuned. Maybe. Hmm. Uh, here we go. Leslie, hey. Uh, hi, Beta. I ain't heard. I'm still at work. I've been at work since 7, 3 in the morning. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I feel you, brother. Hey, Freddy. <clears throat> so, just letting people jump in, because I know they were expecting us to start at 8, uh, 8 o'clock, so we're running a little bit late. Uh, Hall-wise, you guys let me know if you want to see what I got, because it's it's mostly, yeah, it's all video games. <laughs> I, I've been uh, going back to my gaming roots and getting a bunch of titles. The Collector, I heard GameStop has a deal on games. I saw that, but uh, for some stupid reason, GameStop, um, they'll charge me seven eight dollars per item for shipping and then taxes is like seven or eight dollars more i end up paying way more than if i just go to a local uh, um a walmart or something or if i go to ebay and buy it from somebody for free shipping or something uh yeah they're still in business paul <laughs> as, as crazy as it may seem i think they'll still they, they will still be around for a while People like to buy games, and that is a regardless of their stupid practices with their employees and stuff, and, and the ridiculous uh, scandals with uh, you know when it comes to uh, prices and 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 working and all that stuff. Uh, people still like GameStop because they know that is the store for video games, if that, if that makes sense. So it, it'll still be around, even if it's a digital store, it'll stick around. Uh. Yeah, Target, mm, no. So usually, for example, if I were to take, uh, I wanted to pre-order uh, Ghost of Tsushima and the Paper Mario game, instead of paying one twenty for the to for the two of them, I think it, I end up paying one close to one seventy for the for the two games. Was was it one seventy, or was it one? No, that's a little bit too much. I think it was one thirty something, but still, it's too much. I, I would, I usually wait a couple days and then I venture on eBay and try and find somebody selling it for retail with free shipping. And yeah, just wait a week or two and uh, it'll be in my hands. 
I am going to do that for Last of Us because Amazon, I don't have Prime, so Amazon sh charges me a lot. So I'm not going to deal with that. So I'll probably wait a few uh, days and see if I can scoop it up from eBay. <clears throat> yeah. I don't remember right now. I think I, I said I was exaggerating 170. No, it's got to be like one between 130 and 140, and I'm not comfortable paying that much for just two games. Come on. Also, I tried uh, ordering uh, the um... – hey, Gabe. What's up, Gio? What's up, homie? Yo, yo, son. Is it just, is it the Gabe and Geo show, the two Gs? Yeah, double G Express, son. Double G Express. <laughs> I was just telling the chat about my uh, my problems when it comes to shipping. I wanted to get the Paper Mario game, and it's four dollars for taxes. And when I log in, it detects that it's my address is Puerto Rico, so they magically want to charge me seven dollars per shipping and another seven dollars uh, for taxes. I'm like, wow. no, it, it's it's okay. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'd rather wait on eBay. Those, uh, those fancy like VPN things where you can oh yeah. IP. yeah. There's also a service that uh, you can ship to a PO box or something in Florida, and then they ship it to you. That's always an option. But yeah, take a look know. into that. If that's cheaper, then go for it. Or I heard like, well, I know like Best Buy ships to Walgreens, which is really weird. Yeah. But I know, I know, I know you got 20,000 Walgreens in Puerto way Rico. Too many. Yeah, yeah, way, way too, too many. many. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, way too many. Yeah. So I was going to show everybody my video game haul because I didn't get any books. Word. Um, I got, this is for Xbox. I got uh, The Wolf Among Us, the... Fables game. We've been talking about that a lot, so you, you grabbed it, yeah. huh? Yep, because I'm doing a read through of the whole series on my channel, and what? I kind of want to, yeah, I, I kind of want to do like um, at the end, uh, you know, close out the series of videos with like a playthrough with me playing it on YouTube or something. I don't know. Yeah, Red, or maybe that, a review. A, is that a prequel? That's a prequel, right? Yeah, the prequel to the first book. Shout uh, out to everybody in the chat saying hi to me today, man. I appreciate it. What up? Yeah. For the Switch, I got one of my most anticipated games, Clubhouse Games, 51 World Classics, or Worldwide Classics. I love board games and, like, classic games like this, you know, uh, Chinese checkers, uh, chess, uh, darts, bowling, sports, uh, arcade sports. It, this is awesome. It's super wholesome and, and addictive to play, especially with a second player uh, with you, a friend. It's really cool. And for the PlayStation 4, I got, you can blame uh, Lou, because he was talking nonstop about Persona. So I got Persona 5 Royal. This is the Steelbook Edition. What kind of game is Persona 5? I don't know. It's a Japanese RPG, and it's super crazy with high school hijinks, and the cutscenes are all anime. I don't know. Uh, so this is the steelbook, which is really cool looking. I like nice. it. Nice. That's the steelbook right there, and the video game inside. And what else did I get? Oh, and I got um, I got the uh, new animated movie, Apocalypse War, or the DC animated universe. Have you watched that yet? I haven't, because I am planning to do a video on 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 the universe per se maybe like a ranking episode uh talking about them because okay. i've watched most of them i think i still need to watch uh hush the wonder woman bloodlines and this one okay and i'll be done with the movie universe because this ends that universe yeah i got i got a lot of ones to watch too my friend my best friend i was actually at the i was at the bar with them now where i just came from we've been friends for like over 25 years it's ridiculous uh whenever he gets one of those movies he always texts me the uh the digital code. So yeah. my voodoo is just all like DC animated films. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm the same boat as you. I haven't watched Hush yet. I watched a bit of Hush and I was kind of digging it, but it's, it's you know, we all know it's different than the main story. Uh, or mm -hmm. the, the, the source material. Not not a big deal, but it's cool. Uh, I haven't watched the new Wonder Woman one yet. Superman Red Sun. That dark, uh, the Dark Justice one or uh, Justice League Dark one. There's a yeah. few, but you know, I, I have them all. Uh, yeah, the, typically people that there's a problem online is that there people don't know 
that it's a connected universe. So mm -hmm. they criticize the movies. Oh, it's not faithful to the book. It's trash. It's completely different. That's the whole point. It's adapting that storyline to this universe. Right. So it is going to be different on purpose. It fits the continuity they they established in the, yeah. the animated yeah. films, right? Yeah, and it's like uh, I think like fourteen different films, and usually you can tell by the voice actors. Uh, the same if you hear the same Batman voice actor, I, I forgot his name. It that movie's in continuity, so that's usually why. However, the movie can still be bad, but uh, for that I've got no counter argument. <laughs> How about this, real quick? Oh, they, oh, they changed it up a little bit on there for the the comments. That looks nicer. Uh, what are your favorite DCU animated films? That kind of that fits in with the current discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, I love the Judas Contract movie for Teen Titans. Nice, yes. I love the Justice League Dark movie, the first one with uh, Batman and Zatanna and all that stuff. And uh, it's not DCU animated, but it is an animated movie. The um, Oh gosh, the Darwin Cook one. I forgot. Uh, uh, New Frontier. New Frontier. New Frontier. Yeah, I think those are my three favorites so far. I'm trying to think. I can't remember all of them right now. Uh, I know I really enjoyed the Batman Superman ones, Public Enemy. Those are some of the earlier first ones. Mm -hmm. uh, they did Batman Year One. Uh, also controversially, Superman. I do enjoy. I don't know if it's part of the DCU animated like universe, but I did enjoy uh, Killing Joke. Uh, I think that's separate. Yeah. Okay, but still, I just want to throw it out there to get people upset. <laughs> I did enjoy it. I saw it in theaters. I uh, remember that was in theaters. Yeah. I don't. I can't think of all of them now. I can't think of which ones I really. Oh, Red Hood. I, I don't know. If that's part of the MCU. Red Hood was fun. I liked it. it. It's for me, it's better than the actual storyline, and I have the storyline. It's a lot more streamlined and action packed. Oh, the death of Superman's are really good. The death I of Superman, those. the second one, yes, because they did Superman Doomsday, which was awful. Yeah, that first death of Superman was kind of whatever. Then they mm -hmm. re they, they did just recently in the last like two or three years. It was yeah. a two parter. It was a two parter. Those are pretty good. Oh, the DKR, man. yeah, it's, uh, some DKR was pretty good yeah. too. There's nothing like, oh wow, I get to see some Nazi tattoos over nipples on that one. <laughs> I didn't think they were going to go there. Yeah, that shocked me. I'm like, whoa, okay, we're doing that. Nice. Oh, uh, Kenny Crazy, all right. I'm glad the chat's helping out because you're helping me remember some of these movies. Justice League Doom was really good. Yeah. Just because that's one of my, that was based on one of my favorite storylines. You know, just as like Doom, I like it, and I'm going to butcher the actress's name, but it has, uh, was it Claudia Black? Maybe the chat can remember. Uh, she is voicing Cheetah, and to this day, that is my favorite voice actor for Cheetah. She was awesome. I think her name was Claudia Black. But that movie was fun. It's uh, not easy and, to you, but I love uh, Young Justice. Young Justice. I really enjoyed right. Young Justice besides the uh, really racially insensitive way they portrayed uh, Blue Beetle. <laughs> have you watched it? Have you yeah. watched Young Justice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I have the I've, I've watched I haven't seen season 3 but I have the first two seasons on DVD. So so here's my gripe with Blue Beetle and somebody of from Hispanic origins and roots as ourselves. He said essay like every other word and I don't know <laughs> Anybody, I grew up in the 90s where, like, you know, Hispanic gangs and all that kind of stuff was a big thing. I don't, I've never knew anybody who used essay that much or even at all, even today. Yeah. I mean, he, the way he played Blue Beetle was fine, but the dialogue, yeah. it was kind of cringeworthy. Uh, and I'd lost some street cred with Lionheart because <laughs> he's surprised I didn't mention the Throne of Atlantis movie. I totally forgot about that, so sorry. Yeah, that's one of my favorites, too. Uh, let's see. I thought that was pretty funny from uh, Michael. Uh, has Geo's Arcade taken over tonight's show? Nice. Yeah, I mean, I don't have any books. I can tell you what I'm reading, but I haven't got any hauls, so... I'm just talking about video games and, and animated shows. Yeah, those new one-up arcades, those Marvel vs. Capcom ones that they announced... Bro, I, I, I might, have, I might I have, have to pull the trigger, bro. They're amazing. I, I, I love Arcade 1-Up, and 
everybody's been wanting Marvel versus Capcom, and it's finally oh, happening. Yeah. Marvel vs. Capcom, Street Fighter vs. Marvel. Right. Yeah. I forget which one it is, but the final boss is on. I don't know if he's the final boss, but Onslaught's one of the, like, the main like final hmm. bosses. Uh, Jesse, thanks, man. I'm glad you watched the video. Uh, he said he watched my uh, Fantastic Four Wade and Ringo omnibus in that, uh, nice. review, and it commits him to buy it. That's one of my favorite Fantastic Four like series of all time. It's perfect jumping on point. So if anybody's ever interested, especially because we know sooner or later that FF movie is going to get announced. If you want to jump on and get familiar with the FF, that Wade Ringo omnibus is mm -hmm. absolutely perfect. Absolutely it's a great perfect. starting point. Uh, no, Dave K. There is no uh, Marvel vs. Capcom two on it. It's just Marvel Street Fighter X Men, Marvel vs. Capcom one, I and mean, the, the Children of the Atom. Like, did they go back and redo that on there again? I forget, I forget what it was. Because there's two cabs. There's one that's X Men vs. Street Fighter, and that has uh, Children of the Atom again. It has the Mutant Apocalypse uh, SNES game. It has Marvel vs. Capcom. And then they're doing a Marvel vs. Capcom dedicated cabinet, which has Marvel vs. Capcom 1, uh, X-Men Street Fighter, uh, it, the Marvel vs. Street Fighter, and the Marvel superhero games. And there's another one I'm missing. Oh, uh, the Infinity War, Infinity Gems game. Oh, where nice. About Thanos. Yeah. That's the one I think I want to get. Because I have at the store, we have the, yeah, uh, the Marvel Ninja Turtle. Superhero. Yeah, we yeah. had the Marvel superhero one, which has the Infinity Gem, the Infinity War one on it. It's great yeah. because there's videos on like Torpedo's Instagram, but like Ryan Otley and Dan Slot playing it, Jim Lee and John playing it, stuff like that. That's really cool. <laughs> but I don't have any of those in my house yet. And like the Capcom Marvel ones, I might have to pull the trigger, but I don't know where I'm going to put it or if my kids are really going to like, you know, destroy it or something. <laughs> Uh, also, Dave, uh, they can't do uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 because that runs on the Naomi arcade thing from Sega, uh, which was on Dreamcast, obviously, and that's too powerful. If they do that cab, it's going to be even pricier for the consumer. So that's why they haven't done it yet. Because it's Francisco. a very hard chip to emulate. Oh, yeah. That's such a good game, though. Uh, Francisco, thanks, man. It's uh, Marvel Capcom One that has Onslaught as well. I was mm. so I lost my I lost my shit when that came out. When I got <laughs> to the end, well, honestly, no, I'm lying. I never got to the end. I, I had friends that got to the end because uh, they would spend twenty forty dollars on quarters to play that game. I'd spend twenty forty dollars in comic books, but I watched them play. And I go, dude, Onslaught's at the end of this. That is out of that is <laughs> that is crazy. That's such a deep cut. And he was like a newer. That was like a newer, newer thing still. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I, yeah, I still own my FF1. That's not going anywhere anytime soon. Nice. For those games, uh, I always use uh, Wolverine and uh, Chun-Li. Those are my two favorites. That's a good combo. Yeah. Hmm. So, uh, how about you? Did you haul anything by any chance? Yeah. Yeah, let me show you my uh, my haul real quick. I got some things. Um, so let me start off with some really dope single issues. I'm still getting to the single issue stuff for certain fun things. Uh, Steven Platt's nice. Soul Saga, number one. This is the Michael Turner variant. Uh, I went pretty, I went pretty ham recently on uh, mycomicshop.com. So I got that. Uh, Battle Chasers. Battle Chasers 4, uh, nice. Caporetto uh, cover, and the Gully cover. So I got all four of them now. And what the thing is, is I'll show you guys real quick. There's four different covers for number four. Uh, and the back of them, Caporetto is the best one because it's obviously Red, Red Monica's boobies. <laughs> boobies. Uh, it, it, yeah, it's a, it's a puzzle like connecting cover on the back that makes this really mm. cool Joe Chudo uh, Red Monica cover. So, uh, and then I got Battle Chasers number eight. I'm trying to finish off my Battle Chasers uh, run in singles. So I got those. And also from my comic shop, I got a, I got a pretty big whale. I got the Ooh. Absolute Danger Girl slipcase. 
something I've been after for a long time. I'm super excited to finally have this thing. Uh, this has just been one of the ones that I've always wanted. I sold it. I've been selling a bunch of omnibuses and stuff uh, on eBay, so I got a lot of the cool extra cash. So I got this. It has the, the hardcover with all seven issues and all kinds of the extra fun, cool stuff. And then yeah, that's kind of upside down. And then there's also a uh, J. Scott Campbell hardcover sketchbook in it as nice. well. I've never seen that before. Oh, dude, this thing, yeah, I've never seen it in public. Like, I've never, I never saw it on the shelves when it first came out. The only yeah. person I know who has it is Jess, that <laughs> son of a bitch. Uh, he has one. He's the only person I know that has this. And I had to, I had to scour one down. And, you know, it's money I, I spent on, I, I made off of eBay sales. So it's not really real money. So it's all good. Yeah. Good money with that. Also, speaking of some good stuff I got, uh, I also got kind of a, uh, I got into a little bit of a Watchmen kick lately because Watchmen's one of my favorite things of all time. Uh, one of my favorite things about it is they did this beautiful, amazing uh, nice. kind of retrospective, deep, deep look into it called Watching the Watchmen uh, that Dave Gibbons was a part of. Uh, Chip Kid uh, designed and put everything together. This is take this, this is the uh, variant. This is the uh, Diamond preview mm. exclusive. You can only get through Diamond at the time. Uh, and what it is, it's really nice. It is a 100%. It shows everything. Like just here's the, some of the opening pages. Is wow. nice. Dave Gibbons used like tissue paper and did a little couple of droplets of ink to kind of see how the Warshak like patterns would kind of work. Uh, so it's it's like there's a button. It's all like his sketches, all of his notes. Here's that kind of the thumbnail stuff while mm -hmm. he was doing it. There's even like hundreds and hundreds of pages. So I could find any of it in here. Um, Alan Moore's scripts are in here. Again, there's some more of the uh, tissue paper with the Rorschach mask on it. Rorschach designs. So for someone like me who's just a massive Dave Gibbon or a massive Watchmen fan, this is yeah. this is butter. This is this is porn for me. So, so it's like a giant art book, basically. On the yeah, CD. yeah. It's everything. I mean, it's all the notes that he kept everything. Like, thank God, Dave Gibbons. I don't know if he's a hoarder or if he just knew something, <laughs> but he was. He kept everything. Like it's you know Alan Moore notes on it. I, mean, I haven't. I just got this in the mail today. I haven't had a chance to really dig through any of it yet. Uh, but yeah, it is just the most in-depth, like, this is like your PhD's master course or, <laughs> I mean, like he has like how he designed the rooms. Yeah. It, it's just, God, uh, it's just so much stuff that he did in here that just shows like the designs of the streets and the layout of the streets he was doing. It's no longer uh, in print, right? No, this thing is, uh, this version is way out of print. Even the, uh, the regular version where the cover yeah. is Dr. Manhattan on the cover. It's out of print too. And it's a little pricey, not crazy. Mm. I mean, the cover price on these things are like 40 bucks, I think. Yeah. Um, but this one, like I, I dropped like 75 bucks for it, but I had to because it's That's the, the too bad. it's the variant one. Yeah. Um, you could even see here, here is how he designed the, uh, the infamous photograph. He has like, mm. Let me see if I can kind of get this to look a little bit better because I love this. Oh, he has it kind of statted out so that he can draw it the same exact way every time that you saw it. It was just the same exact photograph. So, it, you know, it didn't have any kind of changes or any kind of inconsistencies on it. Like, his panel layouts, like, this thing is just, like, here's the panel layouts for, like, the book pages. Like, he just had everything just mapped wow. out. Before, before going into, uh, and this is all stuff he did. Like he didn't get paid for this stuff. This is the kind of stuff that he kind of just did. That was just a part of the project. Like it was nothing really extra involved. But yeah, see there it is. There's the uh, the photograph where he has it all statted out. More Alan Moore notes. This thing is this thing is gorgeous. This thing is just definitely a prize in my collection. So uh, none, of that, none of that is in the absolute, right? No, I don't think any of this is in the absolute. I think this is a newer Ooh, thing nice. that they did. This all this came out right as the film 
was coming out. Okay. I don't remember if it was before or after. I think it was before, but I remember when it was coming out. I mean, it has like oh, so much good stuff in here. And it even has here's the absolute stuff. You know, they talk about the absolute design mm. and everything. Yeah. And and it's signed by Dave Gibbons. Ooh, nice. Yeah, the previous exclusive one was they were all signed by Dave Gibbons. And if that's not enough, <laughs> it has these uh, eight different postcards on it. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Look at that. Nice. You see like a slightly different version of Warshak here? Yeah. Where the whole, like, the costume was his entire costume and not just a mask. Oh, yeah, worth every penny. That's for sure, dude. Thank you. Yeah, it just keeps going. Love it. Yeah, I know. It's the thing about Watchmen. Like, it's my favorite book of all time. But every time I read it, I always catch something new. And I know, like, going through this and reading through all this stuff, I'm, I'm there's going to be just so much more exposed to me than I uh, ever knew before, I'm sure. And to continue with the Watchmen kick, I got the uh, Best Buy exclusive. This is the Good. HBO. This nice. is the HBO Watchmen uh, Steelbook. Steelbook. Steelbook, yeah. yeah. So Ooh. it's the it's the show. It has 90 minutes of bonus content, two never before seen features, a digital code, and a 30 day free subscription to HBO Plus that I'm probably going to sit on until uh, Justice League Snyder Cut comes out, and I'll use it for that. Nice. So that's awesome. That's uh, that's my haul. I went I went pretty deep. Like I said, I, I made a bunch of money off of eBay, so I decided to get some really cool out of print stuff. Here's a question for you: Have you read Gil and Peter Cannon Thunderbolt? I don't. I've, I've never heard of that before. I have no idea what that is. Yeah, I don't know what that is either, Alonzo. Give me some more info. <laughs> Sweet steel book. Yeah, that's a cool looking steel book. I need to open. It. I just, I just this and the the Watchmen book just came in today, so I haven't even had a chance to open it. Like I got it in the mail, but yeah. So my, I showed it to my wife. She, oh, we're gonna watch that tonight. I go hell yeah, we're gonna watch this tonight. I love. It. <laughs> oh, that was a great show, man. You I never seen. It. I saw the first two episodes. I don't have HBO, so I was, I was, I was, I was torrenting it, and I just kind of fell off the torrent yeah. thing. So I never finished around it. Oh, this is nice. Yeah. Uh, like tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Nice. Inside my digital code. I want to show that to anybody yet. Yeah, careful with the code because there's oh. some uh, eagle eyed viewers that will snatch that up. Yeah, what is this? <laughs> did, I get, did I accidentally get two codes? I think one code is. It could be like one is standalone for the digital thing outside of HBO, and the other one's for the HBO app. No, the HBO app was a uh, they emailed it to me. Oh, okay. So maybe I got two codes. I don't know. I don't know. Nice. If I did, I'll maybe I'll give it away later on the show. Ah, the Blu-rays are kind of the discs are kind of whatever. There's nothing special on them. Yeah, they they should have been yellow actually. I, I, I was hoping for that. I was thinking it was going to be like smiley face or something. Oh, let me get the cool mask. Oh, wait, wait. Let me see that. Nice. I think this is like one of my first steel books. I don't usually go after steel books. I didn't know this thing existed until uh, I saw it on like someone's Instagram. Yeah, nothing special behind here. It's all good. I saw it on someone's Instagram. I was like, oh, dude, I got to have that. <laughs> I, I immediately got super baited. I was like, dude, I got to find it first. Yeah. And they didn't have one like locally. So I had to just order it off of a uh, Best Buy's website, and they mailed it. They mailed it to me pretty quick. They were like, "Yeah, it'll be there Friday." I was like, "All right, I guess I'll wait till Friday. No big deal." And it came today, and I was like, "Sweet!" It was only like three days. Yeah. Uh, Jesse says, "Yeah, Peter Cannon is who Ozzy is based on." Oh, okay. He can was a DC character for a little while. Interesting. Yeah. The, 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 I mean, here's some shots. I only saw, like I said, like the first two episodes, and yeah. I loved it. I just, I just never got around to like downloading it more. 
but it looks great. I mean, I've heard you guys say nothing but amazing things about it. I haven't been spoiled by anything so mm -hmm. far. So I've luckily been able to stay off the hype train, but you know, maybe I did get two codes. They look exactly like the same thing. I don't know. I'll figure it out. If it is, I'll give away another code on, on, on a later show, maybe. But yeah, uh, so that's that's my haul. That's uh, my haul. Paul, tell Omar we need to start. We need him to start bugging David about a Gwenpool omnibus. I I, I like Gwenpool. I, I have the trade paperbacks. I like that series. I'm not I don't sure think it's Gwenpool, but I don't think an omnibus is really like. I don't know if it'll weird. sell. Maybe a hardcover. I, don't know. I mean. Like even with the Kamala Khan, uh, Ms. Marvel, that's a great omnibus, but it's 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 basically like an oversized hardcover. Yeah. For the most part. Same with like there's some really good stuff that's an omnibus that really didn't need to be an omnibus. I have like, you know, the Young Avengers. No, mm -hmm. young, not the Young Avengers. Yeah, Young Avengers. Yeah. Um even uh it's 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 amazing one of the better things out there, uh the Sinister Foles is Spider Man. Mm-hmm. It didn't really need to be like an omnibus, but it is what it is, you know. The Dugan Guardians was only 16 issues, or yeah. Something. yeah. Uh, Bavarian Rev, She Hulk came in today, that made me happy. That's awesome. I'm glad that people got that book. Yeah, that I think, think uh, it's, it's out, it's done. It. <laughs> it's, going, it's going for more than cover on eBay already. Oh, that's so silly. I mean, it's a hot title, it had a low print run because of world events. It'll come back, so I'm sure there's there's no need to pay over cover for that. So just hang tight, guys. I was very close to buying it, but there's so many video games coming out, and there's a bunch of anime and manga that I want that I just put a yeah. stop for uh, collected editions for a while. So I didn't get it. I took. I've a, never read She Hulk. I have no nostalgia. I have no experience. I have no no preconceived affection or anything to do with She-Hulk. So I was just like, that's cool. I'm glad people are, you know, are happy with it. But yeah, I love the art. I think Byrne does a fantastic She-Hulk, but uh, yeah, it's, I, I would rather read the uh, dance lot and uh, Charles Soule stuff over the John Byrne personally. But who knows? Maybe I'll do a video on it. Uh, Gabe. Do you think there's any chance DC will collect series from Milestone Comics anytime soon? I've got a hunger to read Icon and Static, and we'll probably have to hit the long boxes. I, I mean, I will never say that there's never a chance for something to get collected. You, you, we've seen a lot of crazy things get collected before, but I think that might be kind of unlikely. I would love to see like Static and Icon and more of those Milestone things coming out, but... yeah. You know, I don't think I'm trying to think how many issues there were. There were a lot of issues of static and hardcore, I think. But I don't see it happening anytime soon. Got it. Mostly because of the FF Burn Omni. She was the best part of volume two, and that was the better book of the two. Yep. Uh, let's see what else we got on the chat happening. Uh, any word on the size of the print run for the Silver Surfer Omni reprint. Is this going to be another situation like the She-Hulk Omnibus? We don't know about print runs. Like, we, you know, they don't announce, like, hey, it's 5,000 copies that we made. Like, you know, nobody knows that. That's all kind of insider Marvel information. Uh, but I would say, like, with anything, if you want it, or if you think you're going to, if, if you're going to catch the, if you're going to catch a, a case of the FOMO, then I would definitely 100% suggest <laughs> that yeah. you uh, you hit up in stock trades as early as you can mm -hmm. on tomorrow, 12 noon, three, 12 noon on Pacific time, yep. 3 p.m. Eastern time is mm -hmm. usually when is, is the time that the site gets updated. Or honestly, like you want to kind of start thinking these things out in the future and more of a you know, think of the long run of things and you want to start using either Tales of Wonder or DCBS. DCBS is their, uh, their parent site. Tales mm -hmm. of Wonder, I think DCBS in stock trades, they, I think they own that as well. Uh, you can actually pre-order and prepay on DCBS, uh, omnibuses and all that kind of stuff as well. 
but you have to do it like months in advance, like months, months, like the way it's all mail order. It's all mail order DCBS. So when the new previews comes out, uh, you will once that site updates, you have to make your order, pre-order and prepay it, and then it's yours. You'll you'll get it, but mm -hmm. you know, it might be four months ahead of time. But that way, you don't have to be F five F five F five F five on Tuesday uh, on on inside trades or you know suffer it being sold out and then have to find it on eBay or go somewhere else that you can't find it. So that's my suggestion is these things, maybe it's to do with the supply chain and maybe it has to do with what's been going on lately with uh, the shutdowns and the different suppliers. It might be your best bet. I, I really suggest that people buy these things ahead of time. Yeah. Maybe, I mean, DCBS gets you good discounts. Look at your local comic book store if you have one. I don't know what they would do for discounts for you, but you know it's either you pay full cover price on eBay plus shipping, or pay full cover price for a local business. It's 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 kind of you know it's in your court at that point. But these things have been dropping pretty fast lately. Uh, Paul says, "I'm glad I'm finally getting the Infinite Crisis reprint." So the thing about that is, we didn't. I didn't even know that that book has a different cover, which. Personally, I think oh, it's the it? best one. Yeah, it's a different, it's a new cover, and I think it's the best looking one out of the three versions of the uh, omnibus. Let's see if I can find the picture. Give me a second here. Uh, share my screen for a minute. That's the cover for the reprint. Oh, that's nice. I, I personally like that because it's it's more fitting for what's happening in that book. Yeah, I'm a Jim Lee fan. I would like the other one, but it doesn't matter. You would never see the cover. It's gonna be, yeah, it's gonna be on your shelf. You're gonna so, see the spine. You're gonna pull it out. You're gonna pull off the dust jacket. Or at least you better take off the dust jacket. Hashtag take off the dust jacket. Don't be a <laughs> don't be a monster and read your omnibuses with the, the dust jacket on. We should make a t-shirt that says take off the dust jacket. Take off the dust jacket. Uh, let's see. I use TV, DCBS a lot. I've already pre-ordered and paid for War of Realms Omni, Ben Omnibus, and several others. Nice. Good. Yeah, I mean that's if you don't want to play the, the waiting game or, you know, kind of do the last minute kind of uh, FOMO, super bait, trying to get it, just 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 play it smart. You have other options. You might have to pay it ahead of time. You might have to play the long game and do it four, five, six months in advance. But it's better than having to just panic buy it on eBay or something like that. Yeah. Here's another question for you. Does Torpedo sell Omnis at cover price or at a small discount? As I've said before, in the rare occasions my LCS does have an Omni, they at least add $10, if not more, to the cover price. No, we do We do cover price. Um, I mean, it's a business. You know, it, it's how we, we have to sell it for cover price because, you know, our discount is whatever our discount is, and that discount amount is is our profit. We, we sell it at, at, at full cover price. But our pull box customers, we're the only store in town who, if you have a pull box with us, you get 15% off all new books and 20% off all hardcovers, graphic novels, trade paperbacks, and all that stuff. So there's a little bit of a discount nice. if you if you have a pull box with us. Uh, what is your opinion on Before Watchmen and Doomsday Clock? All right. I've the only oh. thing I like about Before Watchmen is the Minutemen storyline and Sil Spectre. Don't really care about the other stories. Didn't like them. And Doomsday Clock, I haven't read it yet. So I'm in the same boat as Geo. I, I liked just about everything to do with Before Watchmen. Comedian was fantastic. Um, God, I'm drawing a blank. There was Rorschach. There was Rorschach uh, was great. Comedian was great. Manhattan uh, had a storyline. Minutemen, Dr. Manhattan, all the main storylines I think were really good. 
the kind of one-off ones, like the Moloch one was kind of whatever. Um, there was like one or two other ones I can't think of off the top of my head right now that were just kind of like one-off. They weren't main character, main storyline ones. For the most part, they're like, you know, eight out of ten. They're all pretty decent, really good stuff. Uh, Sam Geo, though, I, I've never finished Doomsday Clock because it was such a big delay and everything like it. But mm -hmm. a little bit of a possible spoiler because this is what I was told. Uh, Doomsday Clock kind of changes Watchmen, and I don't like that. I that's that's kind of unacceptable to me to go back and change anything that happened to watch me. And it's a yeah, big, yeah. big change. I don't want to reveal anything here because, again, I'm hearing – I didn't read it, so I don't know it for sure. I just heard about it on a different review podcast. Uh, but they make a major change to Watchmen. And, you know, you do whatever you want. You can make all the sequels, all the prequels you want to any kind of series. But I don't think you should be allowed to touch and change or rearrange the actual main – you know, storyline of anything. Mm -hmm. So, I'll, I'll read it. I'll read it though. I mean, they're right. they're coming out with hardcovers and stuff like that. I'll go back and read it because uh, I'm, I'm a Watchman Mark. But you know, if that's true, I'm gonna, you know, I'll read it and be like, all right, I read it. I don't have to ever read it again. So, uh, let's about about Rivera, what book will cause FOMO this Tuesday? This Stay Tuesday. tuned. We'll talk about Stay this tuned. Week's yeah. Releases. We'll talk about this week's releases. Yep. <laughs> uh, what about uh, what we've been reading? Okay. Have you have you read anything? I know you read the uh, the Watchmen book, but no, I just okay. got this. This is literally I've had this for like two hours. Oh, okay. I thought you had it before. Okay. Mm. No, that and uh, the watch that both of these just came in the mail today. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, on my way to go because. We're, we're basically fully open now. So the bars are open, the casinos are open. So my best friends came over. Let's, let's, let's hit up our favorite bar. It's been a long, long time. So let's go there. So on the way there, gotcha. before I left, I got a notification from eBay that the Watchmen book showed up. I'm like, okay, but I got to stop at the mailbox first because something important showed up. And that was in there. And to my surprise, the, uh, the steel book was in there. Uh, but what I've been reading is what I think is one of the best Punisher stories of all time. And that is the Jason Aaron, Steve Dillon, Punisher omnibus. I mean, this thing is absolutely fantastic. I love uh, Dave Johnson is a freaking maniac when it comes down to designs and main covers and stuff like that. I love this cover to this omnibus. Uh, but this is, this is part of the Punisher Max storyline. This is Punisher Max. This is the end of Punisher Max. Uh, Garth Dennis is Punisher Max. So uh, Frank is a little bit more, he's older and he, he's kind of, you know, past his prime, but he's still a beast and a monster. Uh, great stuff. Uh, fantastic writing from Jason Aaron. You get, they established the origin of Kingpin in here, which is a completely different twist on Kingpin and how he actually came up to be Kingpin. I got to watch out. I forgot there's titties in this book. There's a little bit of news <laughs> in this book. Uh, there's a lot of graphic stuff in this book, not just the violence, but like sexual stuff that uh, might be even more inappropriate. But so the first storyline is the, the rise of the Kingpin. The second storyline, the second storyline in this series is absolutely a massacre. It is like the coolest, most well thought out, well put together story. I'm trying to get to it. Um, where there's not like naked dudes or anything. Uh, and that's the bullseye storyline. This bullseye storyline is insane. It is the craziest, nuttiest, most psychopathic uh, bullseye that we've ever seen. He's still like a hired gun. He's still just your normal assassin. But he does the most craziest things in order to get into like the mindscape of Frank Castle in order to kill him better. Like he, not to get there's some spoilers. I won't get into that stuff. But he does find some of Frank Castle's like safe houses and sleeps in his bed in order to have the same dreams that Frank Castle has. So he has 
understanding the way his mind works. It's just, it's just crazy, crazy stuff. Um, I'm only about halfway through. I've only read those two storylines so far in this omnibus. The art is Steve Dillon, but unfortunately, the art's a little, it's a little off for Steve Dillon to me compared to like his preacher or other works where his, his backgrounds are kind of lacking. Uh, his backgrounds are very, very basic. And I, I, I do, yeah. I, I do kind of have a judgmental uh, approach to artists on their backgrounds. Like if it's just, just sip, oh, oops, sorry. <laughs> that was naughty. If it's just simple, just walls <laughs> with cracks, it, that, it, that doesn't, 100% like appease me really um, and that's what all the backgrounds are or just it's just it's a lot of faces it's a lot of blank backgrounds which is fine I get it this is in his older years uh, towards the end of his life I think he died he did die recently unfortunately so I think it was a couple years after he did this this series so it might have been a health issue or a time issue but whatever um, but besides that, and you know, a lot of his faces are, are kind of the same. But other than that, his storytelling is is some of the best storytelling there is. The way he positions people, camera angle wise, and the way they're speaking towards each other and things like that is is the best. Uh, but yeah, so that's what I've been reading. Like I said, I'm only a few storylines in. I just finished the uh, Bullseye storyline, which is which is crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, I can't show you where I'm at now. It's a big spoiler, but. I'm going to keep reading this when I get the chance. Nice. I love that. That's one of my favorite Punishers. It's that Jason Aaron, Steve Dillon Punisher. This was one of my favorite comments. Uh, Francisco, sounds like a good story. Is it still in print? And then immediately after, never mind, it's out of print. Yeah, it's been out of print for a while. It's it's it's, it's a yeah. biggie book right now. Actually, this copy is the first thing I – it's the only thing, but the first the first thing I ever bought from Lou – from 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 oh. here on Omni Bros. I got this from yeah. Lou, so this thing's been passed around a little bit between Omni Bros. <laughs> uh, here's a question: Planetary Omnibus, yay or nay? Um, because there's the absolute that got solicited. So. Yeah, but the absolute is an absolute omnibus. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, it's an absolute omnibus. Now, omnibus is a where is it on my shelf? Forty something issues, right? I think so. It's it's it's. I mean, it's not as big as a you know Death of Superman or Teen Titans, but it's a pretty big omnibus. But either way, yes, that is for me and my collection. And if you had the same taste as me, if you're a Warren Ellis fan, that is pinnacle, top notch Warren Ellis. Like some people put that above Trend Metropolitan. I can't put anything above Trend Metropolitan, but to me, it's one A, one B. Or uh, Grant Moore, or not Grant Moore, it's going to be Warren Ellis works. But the, here's a here's a trick. If you want the omnibus, a little bit of an insider tip: make sure you get the the version that's printed in Canada. It has a better it has better binding. Hmm. Okay. Here you go. Uh, Quack. What long out of print Marvel titles would you like to see brought back? Um, uh, the only one I care about. Really yeah. is uh, the the Phalax Covenant. I want to see the cosmic stuff stay in print for people that haven't read it. I'm fortunate enough that I own it, but I want other people to read it. And it sucks that we finally get an an uh, Annihilation reprint and then Conquest goes out. So yeah. <laughs> one comes in, the other leaves. Yeah, for a while. Nobody wanted that conquest. You, you could get that thing for half off. Yep. Half off cover for conquest was expensive. I now, think I saw it. It's two hundred yeah. bucks. I sold mine for two hundred bucks. That's kind of where this this haul wow. I think that kind of came from. Two hundred. Yeah. yeah. I. I'm I, sure I, they're gonna reprint it. That's why I sold it. I mean, these things are gonna get reprinted, dude. Like. Yeah. If Annihilation I, gets reprinted, anything gets reprinted. I saw a copy. When it was being liquidated for forty something dollars, which yeah. is so dumb, and, and I didn't, I didn't grab it, but it is what it is. Uh, somebody's asking, "How is Becky Cloonan's Punisher? Have you read that?" I haven't read it. The only Punisher I've ever really read is outside of the, some of the '90s stuff. 
is the Garth Ennis stuff. And the, of course, the Jason Aaron stuff. Uh, how likely is it that the absolute planetary gets canceled? Um, fingers crossed it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, let's be positive and, and and see see that get printed. There hasn't uh, been a lot lately for DCs that has been getting canceled. Yeah, I mean, man. I know there was a little bit of an uproar because Jonah Hex Omnibus got down down downgraded to an oversized hardcover, but it's still a great book. Uh, and the John Byrne omnibus got super downgraded to like a standard size trade paperback or, or, or something like that, or oversized trade paperback. Uh, I think uh, Premier hardcover, like a little. That was, yeah, it was something something weird like that. But uh, my, I, you know, I have high hopes. I have hopes. I, I got positive hope for DC that they're going to start being more selective in the things that they solicit for it to be the things that they actually are hardcore about getting released. Yeah. But, I mean, that Fables Omnibus Absolute got canceled, so we'll see what happens with, with the Planetary. So don't go selling your Planetary Omnibus right now if you're looking to get that Absolute. Mm -hmm. I like the Absolutes, but it's going to be a big abs. It's going to be freaking big, dude. Like, Absolutes are taller than Omnibuses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. DC has been mostly moving dates of their collected editions. No cancellations yet. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah that's basically. expected. Yeah, that's that's because of COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Uh, as for me, I'm gonna go buy this real quick because I know uh, a lot of people are are dying to know about the previews. I've uh, started reading again, Magical Girl Apocalypse, to finish out the storyline. So this is volume eight. Um. I already know what happens, but I am reading uh, Doro Hedoro, so I, I pulled this volume from the shelf. Um, I only have three books for To, to Your Eternity, but I, I want to see what all the fuss is about because I love volume one and I have not read two and three, so I'm going to do that and see if I want to continue collecting the series. And comic book wise, I am doing a review on this on my channel pretty soon uh, for Strange Girl Omnibus. From, oh, nice. Yeah. So I I started this book like three in three different occasions and I've never finished it. I think I've gotten to the halfway point and something happened um, uh, that I stopped reading. But now I want to finish the damn thing and make a proper video on it. So. That's a uh, forgotten uh, Rick Remender title. Yep. Serious. Yep, yep, yep. And, you know, uh, it's not my favorite artwork. Uh, I hate to say that because I'm always so positive, but... The story is right up my alley. I, I really like it. Basically, uh, Rapture happens, and she gets stuck behind and is enslaved to a demon in a, was it a bar that she's working in, and she wants to escape uh, with her demon pal right there. So pretty uh, fun book. It's just the art that doesn't really get to me. But yeah, that's what I'm reading, guys. Oh, eBay. eBay. Yeah, more eBay stuff. <laughs> so, uh, do you want to pull the uh, previews? Yeah, I'm going to grab that real quick. Doop. All right, here we go. Previews. For the week of June 17th, uh, like I said earlier, you will be able to uh, order these titles off of our incredible sponsors website, InStockTrades.com, tomorrow, Tuesday at 12 noon Pacific time, 3 o'clock Eastern time. You can kind of do the math and chop it up to wherever your time zone is from there. Mm -hmm. But let's go ahead and get this started up, Geo. Yep. Yeah. So to start off with Image Comics this week, uh, we have Crowded, Volume 2, uh, Deadly Class Trade Paperback, Volume 9. I'm really looking forward. I hope they do a uh, – I'm going to wait for the third uh, library hardcover. Uh, library, yeah. But, man – 
those volume ones and twos are going for a little bit of money right now. So really? Oh yeah. Ooh. Uh, and then moving forward, we got Gideon Falls volume four, uh, Moonshine volume three, which I'm very disappointed yeah. in myself that I have not picked up and checked out yet. Cause it is the awesome hundred bullets team of Brian Azzarello and Eduardo Riso. It's it's game. awesome. I love that series. I, I'm getting that for sure. Oh, I need I need to I need a remedy that I haven't read this yet because I love yeah. Brian Azzarello and I love Eduardo Rizzo's artwork and this is werewolves. So it's how can you go? Moonshine, bootlickers, and werewolves. What's that? Yeah. love? Yeah, exactly. Uh, and you got the Purdy hardcover. I have no idea what this is. That looks like a Purdy book. It uh, looks cool. It's a hardcover. Couple Interesting. Couple of chicks on a horse shooting guns. Pretty cool. All right. And Dark Horse, we have Against Hope and The Art of Wolfenstein, Youngblood. Cool. And then we also have uh, Avatar the Last Airbender, Imbalance Library mm -hmm. Edition. And uh, ben, Bandet, Bandetti? Bandetta? Bandetta. Bandetti. I don't know. <laughs> Volume one, Presto, second edition. Interesting. I like the art. I mean, it's like a really cool like watercolor going on here. Mm -hmm. uh, Disney's Frozen, Volume two, hardcover. Uh, Disney's Pixar Incredibles. And we got the Little Mermaid trade paperback. That's a Disney. Yeah. A lot of Disney, that's right. Uh, then we got the EC archives for War Against Crime, hardcover volume two. Invisible Kingdom, trade paperback volume two. And the Neil Gaiman Library edition. Hmm. Nice. I'm not sure what this is. Give me, let's take a look. I think it might be like all the short stories adapted in comic book form uh, from his novels. Because I recognize the red haired lady. It's a Fabio Moon cover, which is beautiful. Yeah. Oh, man. I might need to get this. Uh, Collects the full graphic novels, A Study in Emerald, Murder Mysteries, How to Talk to Girls at Parties, uh, Forbidden Brides of the Faceless Slaves, there and Secret House of the Night of Dread Desire in a single deluxe hardcover. Four stories in an oversized hardcover. Look at the artists you have on here. you got P.K. Russell, Raphael Albuquerque, Fabio Moon, Gabriel Ball, uh, those are all positive check marks. I'm not sure who Rafael uh, Savoni is or Shane Oakley, but you yeah. know that if they they had to have been handpicked by Neil Gaiman, so it's got to be awesome stuff. I have my uh, How to Talk to Girls book here, but I can't find it. I don't know where it is. That's a great storyline, uh, mini story. And then we got uh, Michelle Fife's uh, Panorama Tree paperback. And IDW, we're going through with Lab Graphic Novel Volume 1. I'm not even sure what this is. Ty, Ty Annie and I'm in? 1989. <laughs> Our Shattered Hopes. Tiananmen. Tiananmen. That thing. Sure. That thing. Oh, here we go. Uh, Transformers Phase 2, Hardcover Volume 11. Nice. And the Walt Simonson Mighty Thor Artist Edition trade paperback. I actually have, is that the one? No, I have the other one. I have, I have the uh, the first Thor Walt Simonson omnibus, uh, not omnibus, but artist edition. But the big old hardcover, massive thing. Uh, DC Comics this week Batgirl Volume 7, Oracle Rising, Catwoman Volume 3, Friend or Foe. Mm hmm. The Astonishing Art of Amanda Connor hardcover. Nice. That's going to be great if you're a hardcover fan, or if you're a fan of art books, or if, definitely if you're a fan of Amanda Connor's work. Mm -hmm. uh, Dial H for Hero, Volume 2. Uh, Flash, Volume 12. <laughs> Jesus, Volume 12 for Flash already. And uh, Joker. The Joker Deluxe Edition hardcover is coming out. 
That is uh, Brian Azzarello and um, Lieber Mayo. Yeah. Uh, Justice League Volume 5, Justice yeah. Doom War, and then uh, Premier Tree Paperback. It looks like a young adult, young graphic novel. Yeah, I was thinking it was probably part of that DC Inc. or something. Uh, Terrifics Volume 3, and You're the Villain, Hell or Risen Tree Paperback. Oh, one more. We got You Brought Me the Ocean. Yeah, that's uh, that's another graphic novel, young yeah, adult graphic novel. All right, and then Marvel this week. Marvel, finally. Marvel, yeah, it's been a little bit. Uh, we got Conan, uh, Book of Thoth, and other stories. Daredevil by Chip Zdarsky, Volume Three, that everybody's been giving really high praise to lately. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Dawn of X, Volume 5. We have uh, Iron Man Epic Collection. This is the War Machine Epic Collection. Then we got uh, Marvel Masterworks, Volume 20, for Avengers, the regular edition, and the DM variant. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> these two are... Uh, will be 50% off on a hey, surprise everybody <laughs> surprise 50% books are back so yeah Marvel there's one more half off somewhere I gotta I gotta bring up our notes uh yeah. what did what did we say uh so, we're going through here we're talking about that gross uh Doritos pickle flavor that you were talking about <laughs> there are three books that are 50% off uh, this week. And Gabe is going to read that in a couple seconds. There so it is. two of them you're seeing right there, the Marvel Masterworks Avengers hardcover, right? Those, right. those two are 50% off. Yeah. Uh, the other one is something else. We'll talk about that at the end of all this. Yep. Uh, and uh, then uh, the only book I care about this week, which is the reprint for... Silver Surfer Omnibus Volume 1. We have the nice. classic uh, John Basima cover. And mm -hmm. DM variant is a Isak Ribic cover. If you want to look at the cover, Omar has a video with his copy has that cover on. I'm getting the classic one. I'm getting the John Basima one 1,000%. Yeah. And this collects the full... Uh, Stan Lee, John Buscema, I think it's 19 issues. 18 issues. 18, yeah. And uh, Fantastic Four Annual 5, and Not Brand Eck number 13. Fantastic Four 5 was the first solo uh, Silver Surfer storyline. And the first appearance of Psycho Man. Mm-hmm. And then we also have Star Wars Age of Rebellion hardcover uh, and Unbeatable, or as Jess refers to it as, Unreadable <laughs> Squirrel Girl graphic novel trade paperback, Squirrels Don't Cry. Dynamite has Red Sonia Birth of She-Devil, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Boom, coming in right on time. With yep. the announcement of Bill and Ted face the music, they have the Bill and Ted trade paperback box set. Nice. There's also a Buffy the Vampire Slayer volume three trade paperback. Lumberjanes campfire songs trade paperback. Steven Universe original graphic novel volume five. And down here we have all the other. Manga and awesome stuff. Asterisk, uh, Omn omnibus thing. A lot of people are excited about that. Oh, really? And, yeah, and it's a hardcover. I know Jess wants to get it. Asterisk, yeah. yeah as you can see, there's two Omni hardcovers coming out. 
I've never, I've never heard of Asterix until just recently. I've only played the SNES game. That's about it. There's a video game based on this character? Mm hmm. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Learn something new every day. So you, they're coming out soft cover and hard cover. Obviously, guys, get the hard cover. If yes. not, well, get the soft cover then. Get what you want, but we, we like hard yeah. covers. Attack of the Stuff graphic novel. Interesting. Uh, wow, Roy Rogers comics. Yeah, Alex Tolt and John Buscema, Roy Rogers yeah, comics. Interesting. So Roy Rogers is a really famous cowboy actor mm -hmm. from back in the day. And my hometown of Victorville, California, actually has a Roy Rogers Museum where Roy Rogers' horse, whose name is Trigger, is on display in full stuffed uh, taxidermy. Oh, that's creepy. Yeah. I've always found that creepy. That's very creepy. Let the poor thing rot. Yeah. At the ground. Can Cancor? Cancor. Cancor sore? No idea what that is. No idea how I got it. <laughs> Complete Wraith. No idea what that's about. Dancing After 10 for Fanographics. <clears throat> Disney Masters Davida Ice Sword Saga Part 2. Uh, from Tokyo Pop, Don't Call Me Daddy. And oh, look, Invader Zim, Volume yeah. 9. I love that story. I love that series. Carnival Volume 10. That's a manga from Yen Press. Oh, here come the manga. Get ready, guys. Let's do it. Uh, uh, Magnetic Press. No, that's a comic. Claw Volume 3. Sorry. Konohana Kitan Manga Volume 8. Uh, Meta. Metafrogs, Bluebeard, hardcover. Okay. Uh, my Room is a Dungeon, rest, Resting Stop, Volume 2. It's a series. It seems a little suggestive. Did you freeze, Gio? All right, I'll keep this going then. Then we got a uh, Mystics, whatever Mystics uh, graphic novel, volume one, Heroes Reborn. Uh, not the cool Heroes Reborn. I'm the back. That I love. Okay, there you Sorry. go. No worries, man. Mythics. Uh, new game, No Vampire, No Happy Ending. Uh, old Growth. Never heard of that. Otherworldly, Izakaya Nobu. Volume 7. Uh, pa Paramus, the City, and Oblivion. And something I'm really excited about, the Pokemon Adventures manga, Collector's Edition. So it's uh, about the size of this book. So here's the here's a regular manga. So you can see the uh, size difference. So that is going to be chunkier and taller, and it collects three volumes in one. So if you like Pokemon, you got to read that manga. It's very cool. Uh, Savage Beard of Sheedwarf. Oh, from Oni Press. Uh, Sleepy Princess and Demon Castle, Volume 11. Uh, Tea Dragon Society. And, oh boy, uh... Umineko when oh this is part of the When They Cry series so this is the spin-off When They Cry volume episode 8 volume 3 Twilight Golden Witch yep it's a psychological horror manga uh Uncle Scrooge volume hardcover volume 4 24 karat moon 
and Wolf Wolf Story Volume Two, Pampered Pooch, not Fenrir. <laughs> I have no idea what that could be. It's about I think it's he gets reincarnated as Fenrir, the Norse mythological wolf, uh, Loki's pet wolf, something like that. And from Aftershock, you are obsolete. No, we're not. No, we are not. All right. So, <laughs> so uh, quick review. 50% off books this week is yeah. the Marvel Masterworks Avengers Hardcover Volume 20, both the regular version and the uh, DM variant. And DC, or I'm sorry, uh, In Stock Trades will also be getting in more stock of the Superman and Batman omnibus. Mm -hmm. And that is the third 50% off book. So if you haven't had a chance to pick up Superman, Batman, omnibus, in stock trades, we'll have it this week. And they will be having it at 50% off as well. <laughs> right on cue with that question. Yes. The answer is yes. You can get it tomorrow at IST 50% off. So go get that. Let's see if we can uh, uh, sell that book out. Let's see if we can make it happen. One more time for the people in the back. Instock.com <laughs> tomorrow will have the Superman Batman omnibus available at 50% off 12 Pacific <laughs> 3 p.m. Eastern thank you beta ray Jim you know what's up yeah yeah I've uh, seen that on, I have I have a couple copies of it in the store it's a thick it's a thick book it is beautiful like the, the Fine and the, the the cover, it's it's great. It's great. Fenrir, son of Loki and giantess Anger Boda, he devours the sun during Ragnarok. There you go. Uh, Geo is drifting. Classroom Volume Three coming out tomorrow. I don't know if IST will have it. I think Right Stuff will have it uh, if there are no delays. Yeah. There you go, guys. And that's that's that, guys. Fifty percent books are back. You were asking, you were demanding, you were uh, in an uproar about that stuff. So we heard you, and uh, IST delivers as usual. Yeah. Some people didn't believe they were coming back. We got a few of those. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the right attitude, man. Uh, Canadian Invincible Comics, awesome. Let's sell it out, everybody. Yep. Everyone, yeah. Here's your here's your uh, your second chance at fifty percent off. X Force Omnibus re-release. Is that happening? I, I haven't know. heard anything about it. See, that's funny though because everybody likes to crap on X Force because Rob Liefeld. But, but they buy. The everybody yep. wants it, and now they want it back in print. Yeah. I got Eric it. asked. He's asking the most important question: Is Geo fifty percent off? I am. 65% off. I don't know if that's good or bad. Uh, Better Ray Jim, I have never read Crisis on Infinite Earths. Is it a bad idea to read Infinite Crisis before I read Infinite Earths? You should have, you can go and read Infinite Crisis. You can read it and be fine with it. But I think in the long run, you're going to take so much out of it if you know the context behind the whole crisis phenomenon when it comes to DC Comics at least the general knowledge of that 80s event. It's a slog to read through, especially nowadays when we're used to quick reading and quick paced storytelling, but it's a classic. I, I loved it. Uh, before I read Infinite Crisis, I read the original one and, and got up to speed. 
Yeah, uh, I, I've said it here before. I, I have the Infinite Crisis like hardcover omnibus, but it's you have to have a PhD in DC continuity to kind of get the grasp of that thing. <laughs> a lot of people feel, and, and I used to, and, and at one point it's true that Infinite Crisis was a good jumping on point, but that was that was twenty five years ago. Yeah, reading it now, it's it's it's. I hate to say it's obsolete and it doesn't matter anymore, but it kind of is obsolete and it kind of doesn't matter anymore because continuity has been punched and reset so many times since then. Yeah. Uh, wait a minute. Am I crazy or did I hear about a stealth Conan volume one re-release someday? That is coming. I don't know the specific date, but it that is going to happen. Yeah, I heard that same uh, information. Uh, Jesus Rivera, when did the Batman Superman Omnibus go up on IST? It's tomorrow. At 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you're going to be able to get it. So be on the lookout for that 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow. I think it originally went out like, like two three, weeks ago. Two, yeah, two weeks ago, I think. Yeah. yeah. But it was... I don't think IST got a lot of copies of it at, at first. And then, of course, there was the whole jumble with the, the shutdown and supply chains and stuff like that. So they're getting more 50% off. Mm -hmm. uh, Crisis is great because you get Wolfman and Pettas in their prime writing a big event together. That event is so bonkers. I love yeah. it. I, I've always been a fan of multiverse stories and alternate worlds and all that stuff. I, I really liked it. I mean, yeah, it's true. It's Wolfman, it's Perez. They're kind of at their top notch. That's when Perez is just killing it at DC. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, if it, if you're a, if you're thirty, if you if you're below the age of thirty, you don't need to read it. <laughs> Maybe read up an article on it or a wiki entry. Yeah. yeah. Um. I'm not going to be reviewing it, but I can maybe plan ahead and, and do a video later on, but not right now. But if you want me to do a video on Super, uh, Superman Batman, then yeah, I'll give it a go. Uh, Francisco, which omnibus do you think will go out of sell? Uh, go, will go, will be sold out tomorrow? Hard to tell, but yeah, Silver Surfer is probably the most popular one. So yeah. if you want. If you want anything right now, like I said, you need to just you need to just jump on it as soon as possible. Don't pro don't 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 procrastinate at all. It's the same problem that we had with the She Hulk omnibus, right? But now with Silver Surfer, so once it goes out, it's gonna be a while before it comes back. So you yeah. better grab it. If you want it, grab it. And if you don't like it, you can sell it. So no nope, huge loss there. But if you want it, get it. Martin's saying that it's the first time for IST to get it tomorrow. The first time they're getting the Batman Superman on the bus. I could have sworn they got it, but it just sold out really fast. I thought I don't. I don't think they. I don't think they got it because nope. of the whole lunar thing. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Either way, tomorrow half off, dudes. Yep. Uh, Matthew, do I need to follow Superman Batman? Is it really that good? If you've got time and you want a quick experiment, check out the Public Enemies movie and the Apocalypse movie, because those are the adaptations of the first two story arcs in that omnibus. If you like that stuff, the you'll love the comic even more. Great artwork. You've got uh, Ed McGinnis, uh, Michael Turner, stuff like that. So I think you're going to have a fun time with it. It's a fun team up book. Superman, Batman, the first one, uh, uh, President Luthor declares uh, uh, them enemies of the state. So there's a huge bounty on their heads, and all the supervillains are gunning for Batman and Superman. So they've got to team up and see how they can defeat this situation. And then Apocalypse reintroduces Supergirl with uh, all the dark side and all that stuff. So, yeah. 
Apocalypse. Yeah, that Supergirl one's great. And they they, they did a really good, uh, the animation-wise, a really good homage to like Michael Turner's art style. It looks mm -hmm. pretty spot on. Yep. Uh, yeah, FOMO, I'm all in, baby. Nice. It's almost a thing, man. It's, it's real. And it's going to be real for that Silver Surfer Omnibus next week or tomorrow, honestly. Yep. Uh, Michael Lombardo, did we ever find out why Fables Absolute got canceled? Page count was right up there with the latest planetary solicit. Enormous a book. I just think they didn't know which format they wanted the book out in. So because if you look at the contents of the compendium that's coming out, it's an omnibus. But you're getting a compendium, a fat soft cover. So I, I think they just didn't know which format they were. They tried settling uh, with one and ended up with the other. I think they realized how ridiculous it was, ridiculous it was to have an om absolute omnibus. Oh, yeah. yeah, that makes no sense for an absolute. I think an absolute should always be a thin book. Yeah. Like, or, I mean, I, I see it for planetary because you're getting the entire story. Yeah. One, but, I get it. You, you do one big, crazy, big, tall, omnibus type thing in a slipcase. Cool. But for fables, 150 imagine, issues. Yeah. Imagine, like, God, uh, five like of them. The, the Kirby's Fourth World omnibus. Yeah. <laughs> but a little bit taller or a lot taller. Yeah. And a slipcase times like. Four or five. It, that's going to be an expensive printing. I think. I think. I would think that they 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 realize that if you're in for one, then you have to be in for all five, and that was that would just be too much for anybody. Yeah. <laughs> Gabe, you just made a new format. Absolute omnibus. That's what it is. <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> That's exactly what we were calling the uh, the fables thing. It was an absolute omnibus. That's it's what it was. It was like forty issues, forty one issues, and like three one shots. Yeah, it's crazy, dude. And a taller because if you guys have absolutes, I got a whole roll of absolutes in a Kalak. Yeah. It those absolutes almost touch top to bottom in a Kalak shelf in a cube. So imagine that, but like. Like some crazy omnibus thickness with a slip case that you got to try and pull the thing out and try to read it. It's and then for fables, that's it would have been like four or five of those things. That's yeah. and that's I think that's I think they just realized they might have bitten off more than they can chew because if the first one doesn't sell enough, then they might never do the last one, and then that's just a disaster. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty daunting task. You're printing out such a massive book with the hopes that people buy it and want to continue spending that money on that series. Because again, 150 issues in absolutes, that's that's a lot of money. It is, it is. Uh, Gabe, I was watching some older videos and was wondering if you got a chance to finish uploading scans of Wizard Magazine. No, that was too much. I couldn't figure out how to do it the right way. I couldn't figure it out. Uh, the Marcelo Ramos. But what? Okay, so, but why nobody thinks Big Damn City is ridiculous? It's the same thing. It's not the same thing. It's huge. It's it's thick. It's massively thick, but it's not as tall, and yeah. it's not a slipcase, and it's not going to be five of them, four or five or whatever. We were trying to figure out how much it would be to do all of Babel's run. So, you got to think about it like that. Five. Here's here's my sensitive. Let me pull it out real quick. It's right here. So imagine Sin City. Oh, God. Imagine Sin City, but a little bit taller. All right, a little bit taller yeah. and a slipcase. It's going to be a big old like block and then times it by five. Yeah, probably going to be like four or five of them. Right. That's the problem with Fables. Uh, Planetary, I don't shit. I don't agree with Planetary doing it either, but at least it's it's, it's a one time thing. It's a one time thing. So if you're into it, you can get it. 
Uh, I just dropped some books that fell off, whatever. Uh, that's cool with planetary because it's, it's a one-time thing, but being committed for one, you have to be committed for all four or five or whatever it's going to be. Uh, Gotham, which is the biggest absolute so far? DK3. I don't know. What's the biggest absolute so far? Biggest single absolute so far. Uh, I'm looking at mine. I got a lot. So far, it looks like the thickest one I have is, <laughs> is Crisis on Infinite Earths. <laughs> it's two books. It's two books in there. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, man. It's, it's not even that much thicker than the other ones, honestly. But yeah. imagine. I agree with Matthew. Fables should have been an omnibus, not a compendium. But, you know, the deluxe hardcovers are, some of them are really hard to find and pricey. So if you really want to read the story, uh, get the compendium. They're, they're not bad. It's just, uh, again, we all prefer the <laughs> deluxe hardcover thing. But the compendium's not bad. And yeah, I mean, like, what, uh... <laughs> That's my text on. Uh, so most, um, most absolutes are three. Most storylines are three, or most series are three absolutes at the, at the most outside of Sandman. I think Sandman was, like, what, five or six? But they're not that thick. They're not crazy thick. And it's not... And Sandman is... Sandman, Sandman. A, a million more people know about Sandman. They teach Sandman in, in a lot of college courses. They don't really, Fables doesn't have that kind of outreach, I think. I've always said Fables, while I love the series, it, it's always been like a B lister when it comes to the Vertigo stuff. It's fantastic, yeah. but it doesn't have the branding and recognition like Sandman, Preacher, Swamp Thing, all that stuff. I mean, David, when it was first coming out, it was getting a lot, a lot of love. But yeah. I mean, it's 150 issues, so it's a, it's a lot of it's a big commitment. Uh, Gia, why wouldn't people buy the Fables books? I, I say that because I'm coming from the mentality of someone that isn't into the collected editions game, and isn't looking at websites like In Stock Trades and doesn't know about discounts and all that stuff. So they're going in, they see this massive book for 150 dollars, and you tell them. Here's volume one. You have to spend another 150 for volume two, another 150 for volume three. It, it, it can be a little scary for new readers that want like the ultimate experience. That's and you I know, meant. yeah, and it, it's not going to fit in a Kalex shelf the right way. It, it, it'll, it'll take up at least one full cube and then probably another part of a cube. And people are really, some people are very OCD ish or, 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 um, or particular about having their spines line up and everything match in one cube. So that would be a problem. It, it's, it's, it's a lot. I mean, it's gonna be like a block to get all those things in the, all together. Uh, no. Honestly, if you wanna just read Fables, if you wanna read Fables, some of the hardcovers, yes, they're out of print and they're a little pricey. Just get the trades. It's 100% worth it to get the trades. It's a great series. There's a bit of a dip at one point, but if you kind of push through it, 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 it everything writes back up and it just it gets really great again. Yeah. Um, yeah, seven hundred and fifty dollars for five. Yeah, casual fans are not gonna get that. At the end of the day, casual fans are just gonna grab the trade because it's like what ten, fifteen bucks. So. Uh, so, what was the other thing I wanted to highlight? Oh, this is very important, guys. Before we leave. Uh, make Gabe smile and me laugh. I don't know. Like, hit the like button. And if you're not subscribed to the Omnibus Collectors Network, please consider doing so. We do this every week, uh, multiple shows a week, talking about collected editions and geeking out about comics. Every Monday is our hauls, our reads. You get the previews with uh, IST special discounts. Yep. Uh, Thursday is always a topic show. And every other Thursday is Geo and the awesome uh, Manga Utaku show. Manga. Sunday is Coffee with the Omni Bros, which is a news topical Q and A kind of thing. And then also on Sundays, you get the Fangirls. The Fangirls mm -hmm. assemble as well. So two shows on Sundays. Yep. Uh, Kenneth, 
That is my favorite Batman film to this day. I love Batman Begins. Nice. It was released today, uh, f- 15 years ago? 15 years ago, yeah. Wow. Oh, God. God damn it. <laughs> you know the best Batman movie, though? Which one? Ask it a Phantasm. Also true. Yep, forgot about that. But live action wise, uh, I'd, I'd love, you know, Dark Knight, yeah, it's great, whatever. I love Batman Begins. I love a good origin movie. Oh. Oh, that's great. I remember watching that and going, they got Bruce, they got Batman right and they got Bruce Wayne right. Usually in those movies, it's one or the other. And just yeah. that scene where Bruce Wayne is in the in the bar or the restaurant and he brings in those chicks and they're like, oh, you can't do that? And he's like, I own this place. I just <laughs> bought it. I'm going to go sit in the fish tank because I'm Bruce Wayne. I thought that was perfect. I love, it gives uh, him that, that playboy eccentric yeah. billionaire i do whatever i want and that kind of attention and that demeanor you go that guy can't be batman he's walking around with all these hot chicks taking swims and fish <laughs> uh, fish tanks in the casino like that's not or in the restaurant like that's not that can't be batman uh here's a question do we know about this thoughts on morbius being as anticipated as the silver surfer reprint I don't know about it being anticipated, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to sell out fast. Yeah. Isn't it like a low print thing as yeah. well? I think, I think so. She Hulk's uh, shipped out of print or shipped sold out. And again, this is the supply chain is a little wonky still. Uh, yeah. So it's, so take this with a grain of salt. Don't take this as a, as a panic scenario. Uh, don't take this as a, you know, you need to go out and spend extra, extra money on on these books or, or anything like that. But uh, She-Hulk shipped sold out. Uh, <laughs> Silver Surfer is shipping sold out this week. So you have to get, you know, it's, you know, the first initial order is going to be gone pretty quick. And I think Mor- Morbius, the, the the DM cover, is going to be shipping uh, sold out. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Yeah. And again, like I said, like from now on, guys, if this is June fifteenth. Starting now, you if you're worried about books going out of print and you're not getting it, you need to just go to DCBS, which is IST's parent company, and yep. just pre-order it months in advance. The moment it's solicited and it's up on there, pre-order it, pre-pay for it. You get this. I think I think it's the same discount. It's usually about fifty percent off, forty percent off. So you still mm-hmm. get an excellent discount. You get the same shipping, the same type of customer service, all that stuff. Uh, from DCBS, and you yeah. don't have to worry about is this going to ship out late or is it going to ship out sold out? Am I going to be able to get it? Oh no, IST, you know, whatever. Uh, you need to just take our word of advice and start doing that. I know Omar does. Omar still orders his books that way. He doesn't order from yeah. InStock Trip that much, he gets them mm-hmm. from DCBS. Uh, and this is true. Most new releases will have limited printings until everything normalizes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think all 2020 is going to be like that, unfortunately. Yeah. I don't there's see that happening. Store, yeah. There's still stores that aren't open. A lot have shut down. So I don't think they're going to be trying to print that much. You know, stores are only going to buy what they think they can sell. So, like your local, your local comic book store, you'll be lucky to get one. I do the ordering for uh, for Torpedo. I, I always order, depending on what it is, like three. I have three Silver Surfer on the buses coming in. One of those is mine. One of those is another person at the store. And one of them is already for a customer that pre-ordered it. So ours are already sold out. So, yeah. I mean, that's that's just kind of the way it works. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. Yeah. Uh, with that said, we will wrap it up. Let's get out of here. Uh, you can find me, Gabe Loves 90s Comics, on Instagram 
and here on Sundays and Mondays. And uh, you can find me on A Week in Geekdom talking about anime, comics, manga. And on this channel, I'm I'm almost always on every single day that we do Omnipro. So <laughs> you'll see me eventually. Oh, yeah. um, but before we leave, please remember, one, that you can get Superman Batman Omnibus for 50% off when you visit InStockTrades.com where you can get all your collected editions and manga up to 50% off. Loyalty discounts, tack on an extra 2% to that. And if you make an order of $50 or more, you get free shipping. Also, at the end of every month, we do a gift card giveaway courtesy of our sponsor, and the Omnibros code will come out soon. You just got to hang tight and watch more episodes. It'll eventually come back, and we'll talk about it. So yeah, fantastic customer service and wonderful packaging that you can only get at instocktrades.com. Thank you everybody for liking. Thank you so much for the input and for chilling with us and talking video games and comics and omnis and animated movies and Watchmen. We talked a lot about uh, cool stuff today, so that's fun. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, we will catch all of you next Thursday for whatever topic we decide. We usually do that an hour before the show starts. So, yeah, yeah stay tuned for that. Let's see what happens. An hour. You're being generous to you. <laughs> Probably like 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah.